Good to have all of you here tonight. Let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Immediately, when a preacher says Ephesians 2, your mind goes to verse 8, where the Bible said, For by grace are you saved through faith. That's one of the most well-known verses in the Bible, and no doubt, probably the most well-known verse in the book of Ephesians, probably. And everybody, if you've been saved any time at all, you've heard that verse, for by grace you're saved through faith. We are champions of that verse. That's bad. We believe that. We believe we're saved by grace. Just like the song says a minute ago. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But, look at the next verse. Uh, verse number, number 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, we're not saved by works, but we are created unto good works. But everybody preaches on verse 8. Not many people talk about verse 10. See, we're not working to try to get to heaven. We're already going to heaven. That's fixed and settled. The second you get saved, your destiny is fixed. You're going to heaven. Amen? I mean, if a man's saved, he's going to heaven. A woman's saved, she is going to heaven. The Lord may have to beat you after death before He gets you there, but He'll get you there. Somebody said, what's going to happen to them backsliders at the rapture? They said they was going to go ricocheting off the planet. Bing, bing, bing. Like that. I don't know about that. Uh, but I know one thing. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. But the Bible said that we are created unto good works. I'm not working. I'm not down. I mean, I can drive down here. It's 100, 155 miles from my house to here. I can drive down here last night and back home then again tonight trying to work my way to heaven. That ain't enough. Uh, I want to work like a dog because I am going to heaven. Yeah. Go. That's right. We ought to work for the Lord. I cannot work my soul to save for that my Lord has done. But I can work like any slave for the love of God's dear Son. Yeah. We ought to do what we do because we love Him and we appreciate what He's done for us. If I work for the Lord because I'm scared I'll go to hell if I don't, that ain't going to accomplish nothing. If I work for the Lord because uh, you'll, you'll think bad of me if I don't, that ain't going to come as nothing. But if I work for the Lord because I appreciate what He's done for me, then that's the right way and we'll get reward for that one day. So I'm going to preach tonight on the subject of a working church. A working church. I believe that God never made a possum that it wasn't a tree for Him to climb. God never made a rabbit. There wasn't a hole for him to go in. God never made a squirrel. Or there wasn't somewhere for him to be. And God never saved a person without something he wanted them to do. Somebody said, well, I believe God's all through with me. No, he's not. You're still breathing. If he's through with you, he'd take you on out of here. The very fact that you're here proves God's not through with you. I, I don't care what your past or present is. God would, he, as long as you're here on this earth, He has a reason for you being here. I don't even want to stay here one minute after God's through with me. Do you? That'd be an awful lot. When He's done with us, let's go. I ain't going to heaven. So tonight, I want to talk about a working church. Now everybody in here, we're going to get to work for God. We have these next two days. What an opportunity we have. You, I mean, uh, many of us will never be able to sing like them sisters up here a while ago. I'll never be able to sing like that. Most of you won't. We'll never be able to play the piano like this sister over here. She, she does a great job. I'll never be able to play like that. I've already made up my mind. I ain't going to I ain't gonna be able to play like that. None of us in here tonight, we're never going to be as smart as Dr. Scott. <laughs> uh, we're not, really. I'm serious. I mean, we ain't going to be as smart as him. He's a, very, he's a brilliant man. But uh, i tell you what we can do. Tell you what we can do. We can roll up our sleeve, brother, and get out here and beat on beat the bushes and get a handful of tracks and get somebody to God and ain't none of them can do nothing better than that. 
Amen? As a matter of fact, you young people here tonight, you can reach people that me or him Amen. would never be able to reach. There's people, I mean, when they see us come, we're a preacher and we got a Bible, they put the guard up just like that. Lord, I've seen the light. I've seen them turn. Herbert must have preached. Heard the TV cut down. I turn the light out and everything. You can hear them in there. You can hear them in the house scuffling around in there. And, you know, I, I know you're in there. You know, that up, knock on the door. And my, uh, one, one kid come to the door and said, Mama said to tell you she's not home. <laughs> you know? But you know what? Uh, well they, they have their guard up and come up. But you young people, you're out here playing basketball with them or you live next door, you can go over there and you can, you can do something for God. Now what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to, uh, let's see how nice I can say this. I'm going to build a fire and I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you. And I'm going to push you to do something for God. And the reason I'm going to push you to do something for God is because we're running out of time. The Lord's coming back. I got two texts on my phone this morning, preacher. One was from my youngest daughter, Corey. You know, some of y'all girls know Corey. Uh, and she said, the rapture is coming. Uh, she'd been watching the news and all this stuff that just in the last few days. Uh, oh, is, is, you know that army over there, is, is. Uh, you see, uh, uh, we got is, is on one side of us. We got Ebola on the other side of us. I, got, uh, I, I like you to feel sorry for me. You'll pray. Uh, and you've got Ebola on the other side of us. And then the state of North Carolina legalized gay marriage last week. You know, and all this stuff going on. Don't you kind of feel in the air? I mean, I mean, the Lord's coming back, people. I mean, He's coming. He's coming quick. We better quit messing around and fooling around on God. It's about time to take all these blessings you soak up here every night and get out there and do something for God and be created unto Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen. I'll talk about tonight a working church. Victory Baptist Church, if everybody here tonight went to work for God like you could and should, there's no telling what the Lord might do. The Lord gave me these three little thoughts the other day and I'm just going to give them to you very quickly tonight and we'll go. I will say first tonight, a working church is a healthy church. A working church is a healthy church. You see a man, and he's out here, boy, he's got an axe, you know, he's busting wood, and he's busting wood, and he's putting that firewood in the pickup truck, and then he'll take that truck down to the corner and park it, and put up our sign, $140 or whatever. Uh, you can get a load of wood, whatever. You know what? You know, that man must be a healthy man out there working like that. You show me a church that's working, I'll show you a church, a body of Christ that is healthy. I think tonight that one of us have a spiritual Ebola or something in a lot of churches. Oh, nobody will hit a lick for God. I mean, you can preach, scream your head off, and I think there's a sickness in the body of Christ. Uh, somebody told me it like this. Um, they said something about something gets in your computer and they call it a virus. And they said a virus got in your computer. I said, oh, I can't do a virus to get in your computer. They said it did. I said, that's not your computer. I mean, I know there are demons in them, but I, they don't get the flu. And he, they, said, they said, no, no, it, it's something that gets in your computer, and your computer gets sick. And uh, it don't work right. And I thought about that, how a virus gets in your, the body, human body. You get sore throat, or you get a fever, and you, or maybe you get sick and throw up. You know what you got to do? You got to lay around there or two. Uh, you got to go to the doctor and get medicine. And you, you see somebody laying there like this, you know, that got a rag on their head, uh, you know, and uh, set them up there and got something here, you know, throat pills and everything else. You, you know what you think? You think they're sick. They're sick. Something wrong with them. That's the same feeling you get in a lot of our churches tonight. Sick. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, a working church is a healthy church. Yeah. A working church, I said, is a healthy church. You get out of here tonight, go back up that track back, all you guys right here, y'all got to play ball with these boys. They're pretty good boys there. Pretty good ball playing boys. And you, you girls, you girls ain't ashamed to get up here and sing in church and everything. Tell what you do. Get you a handful of them tracks in there and go, go downtown tonight or tomorrow night as we get through. And I mean go to the Pizza Hut and everywhere and you just walk up and say, hey, how you doing? 
We're having a youth rally at our church and we want you to come. We're having a youth rally at our church. We want you to come. You know what? If you're healthy, a church that's healthy will work. And a church that works is healthy. We don't have time to sit around and gossip. We don't have a virus of sin in our church. I'm telling you, you're busy. You can't just come in here and soak up blessings and soak up blessings and soak up blessings and soak up blessings and then go home way around tomorrow night and soak up blessings and soak up blessings. God wants you to soak up these blessings so you can go out and squeeze them out there on people that don't know God and don't know the grace of God and don't know how to get saved. The Lord wants a healthy, working church and we've got to change Let's do it for God. Amen. Let's get busy for God, people. Let's do something for the Lord. It said a tree is known by its fruits. And so is a church. You know those mega no-name brand churches uh, that are growing? Yeah, said, oh, somebody said, oh, them big old churches, they're growing like crazy. You know where most of their people come from? They come from dissatisfied church members that go to dead churches. They don't come out of pool halls and bars and places like that. Listen, brother, we get our converts out of, out of crack houses. We get converts like he's talking about. What can change a man overnight or instantaneously, just in a matter of seconds, on the altar? It's a born-again experience from a man believing the Bible. That's how we get people saved. That's how we get people in our church. We don't, we don't, I mean, if somebody comes from another church, we don't turn them away, of course. But we go get at people that are sinners. That are sinners. That live in sin. And give them some. We ought to work. Work for God. All right? Now, you know what your problem is? You're sitting there thinking, well, he's, he's, he's a pretty good preacher. I like him on. And you don't even think I'm talking to you. That's your problem. You ever met these people? They go to church and they they judge the preacher like they rate you. You know, they I have all the time they come up. They'll come up. I've got to come up not long ago. I preach. I've been preaching and Lord have mercy in about seven or eight different churches just in the last few weeks and I don't even know where all I've been. Tell you the truth, right off right off hand, I've been traveling the globe the last few weeks and we've been preaching everywhere. And God came up to me and he said, uh, "Boy, I tell you, preacher, that was about a ten. That was a 10. God came up and he said, man, you knocked a home run. And I, I got in the thought, uh, is that what we're doing here? Is, is this spiritual American Idol or something? Or am I up here preaching and y'all are sitting there rating me? You're sitting there saying, now, I, now that one the other night was better than that one. But I like that one too. Now, my favorite was Tuesday night. Now, no, no, that ain't what you're supposed to do. I mean, one guy said, well, we're, that one guy told me, he said, well, we want to we rate your sermon, preacher. And I thought, well, if, if you rate us, we're going to start rating you. <laughs> we're going to start rating them, preacher. Late Sunday morning. Come in looking like your mother-in-law moved in Sunday night. What didn't seem when we all stood, didn't pay the tithes, laid out Wednesday night. I rate you about a two. <laughs> you might be a two Christian. But the truth is, I ain't supposed to rate you and you ain't supposed to rate me. We're in here trying to get fired up and go out of here and get to work. I told this story the other night. It's, it's funny how that people don't get it. Now, 90% of you people sitting in here tonight will listen to me preach this and you ain't going to do one blessed thing about it. You ain't going to do it. You know why? Because you're backslid. Amen. You ain't going to do it. You think it's to somebody else. Let's get quiet in here now. <laughs> you're about that guy. You know, preachers, we're not supposed to just pick people out. You know, you're not supposed to do that. And I don't do that. I try my best not to do that. If I've got a problem with you, I, I'll come and sit down and talk to you, just me and you. I don't get up in the pulpit, let me be a coward, and take pot shots at somebody I ain't man enough to talk to. Right? Preacher ain't supposed to do that. They said this preacher one time, Brother Scott, he said he, he really, one of his deacons, he was really, really, oh, oh Lord, he was just, I mean, he's mad at it. He got up Sunday morning, he preached a whole sermon. Right to that guy. It was obvious. He done everything to call his name. He said, bless God. 
some of you people, I, you ought to be ashamed. I'm not going to call no names or nothing, but these people that sit on the front and wear these red shirts, I, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. I'm, I'm not naming nobody or nothing, but you know, I, I mean, he done that the whole sermon. And it was obvious who he's talking to. Well, he said when he got through, he said when that he got through preaching, he said the first woman come out, she said, Preacher, every word you said was right to me this morning. And she said, I appreciate that sermon so much. Next fellow come out. He said, Brother, he said, you hit home day. And I mean, everything you said right to me. Next, next person come out. said, Preacher, you must have been over at my house. Uh, peeping in the window uh, because you, you read the mail. You, you told exactly what's going on. I can't believe you did, you did that. Well, finally, the guy come out that he was really preaching to, you know, he come out and he said, that was good, preacher. You really told him off this morning. <laughs> so that's how people are, isn't it? Yep. Ain't that how people are? Yep. You'll sit right there tonight and say, boy, he really told him tonight. <laughs> and, and I ain't talking to them. Talking to you, big boy. Yep. You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Every one of you. Just imagine there ain't nobody else in here and let's get busy and go to work for God and get the job done God's called us to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A working church is healthy. Amen. I mean, if an animal laying down, you know, that won't even eat, you know what you say? It's sick. If a church member lays down and won't do nothing for God, they're sick. There's something wrong that's unhealthy. I heard about a church that got so dead. It was dead at 4 o'clock. A woman died. Died right there in the church service. And they called the EMS. They come in there. They carried four women out before they got the right one. I'm telling you something. They couldn't even tell me all the fuck. It's in a coma. I, I was sitting there. Going, I listen, that's a dead place. It's sick. We ought to have a healthy church. Victory Baptist Church ought to be, you know, I like to see a church full of life. I like to see these kids just scrambling over, over top of chairs and pushing each other. Oh, hallelujah! That's the way it's supposed to be. Thank God. Now grab you a handful of tracks on the way out and get out of here. Tell somebody at school, go call your neighbor, get them in here. Let's get busy and be a healthy church. You know why gossip gets started? Because people don't work in a church. You know why jealousy gets in churches? People don't. You get the same people going to church together every Sunday. Preacher can't. It's hard for the preacher to preach because after a while you done heard all our stories and you done heard all our illustrations. I mean, I mean, it's impossible to say something different every time you get up. It can't be done. And many times we have to preach. It's impossible. I mean, people get mad and say, well, I've heard him say that before. And you can't even sing Amazing Grace without looking at the songbook. And you sung it 500 times. And you, <laughs> you expect us to say something completely different every time we get the point. That's impossible. Nobody can do that. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. Listen, it gets boring if there ain't new people coming into the church. Amen. The part that makes a healthy church is new life coming in here. Amen. That's my second point. A working church is a moving church. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. We're aggravating the fire out of people. We had a big youth right up there marrying one time. We had two or three times, 2,000 people there that night. And I mean, the big and I got up, married a little bit of town. And uh, it's a lot, it's, I don't know, it's probably littler than uh, regional. I'm sure it is. And I got up to that church and I said, all right, everybody fired up. Woo! I said, we're all going to the pizza hut to get out the tracks. Anybody wants to go? Give you some tracks, teenagers, and we're going to pizza to give them out. And I flew around there and talked for a little while, and people would talk to me. I said, I'm going to go out there and see how the kids are doing at the, at the pizza hut. And it's about an hour after the church is over. I drove out to the pizza hut, and there was about, it looked like 150 Christians out in the pizza hut's parking lot standing there with tracks, and nobody else. They flushed them all out. All the sinners left. I mean, there wasn't about 10 or 15 old rednecks out there eating pizza. Here comes 150 teenage young people. Here, you want to return? Go to church tomorrow. Go to church tomorrow. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of these people crazy. And uh, they run them off. I said, Lord have mercy. Where's everybody at? They were just standing around. They wasn't nobody to give a track to. That's, that's, that's crazy. 
I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, we ought to make up our mind. Hallelujah. We're going to get to work for God. I mean, get God's way. Get them together. Go tell them people. I mean to tell you, get them in here. Get them in here. Get them in here. Uh, you, 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 you got a car? Have you got a car? Has your mama and daddy got a car? You get everybody you can. Make two trips. Fill up car up. Fill that pew up. Get them in here. Let's go to work. We've got a chance. Let's go to work for God. Amen. Amen. That's right. I heard, uh, I'll never forget, old Jack Hiles years ago. And I, regardless of what you might think about Jack Hiles, I mean, he had his faults there. But i tell you one thing, brother. They, they, they won some souls. I mean, they had them going everywhere. He said one time, he'd been there a few years, the preacher. He said, I, I will set this woman one day come to his office. Knocked on his door. Said, Preacher, may I have a word with you? He said, yes, ma'am. Come on in, please. He said, can I help you? She said, no. I just want to get a look at you. He said, is there, has you got some kind of problem? She said, I just want to get a look at the man that's ruined my life. He said, ma'am, I don't know you. I've never seen you before. How am I ruining your life? She said, I'll tell you. She said, before you came to this town, life was easy. It was normal. She said, we didn't bother nobody. Nobody bothered us. She said, a few months after you got here, she said, I was coming out of the grocery store. She said, there's a strange looking young man come up to me. Said, on a white shirt, had on tie. One of the students, I guess, up there. He said, come up to me and have a little piece of paper. And he walked up to me and said, here, ma'am, if you died tonight, would you go to heaven? She said, that tore me up. She said, that bothered me. I went home and thought about that. I thought, why would he say that to me? Out of all them people. She said, I, had, I lost sleep. She said, it bothered me. She said, the other day, about a week later, I was at the post office. She said, I come out of the post office with my mail. Here come two more of them strange looking. You look just like that other. <coughs> short, short hair, tie, Bible. Walked up to me and gave me a piece of paper and said, ma'am. Died tonight. Would you go to heaven or hell? She said, I had nightmares. It tore me up. She said, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't sleep. And she said, Preacher, she said the other morning, 5 30 in the morning, I got up. I went out to get the paper. It wasn't even daylight. I had my house coat. My hair's up in curlers. She said, I stepped out up to get the paper. One of them strange looking young men come down the street. Look just like them other ones. He handed me a piece of paper and said, Ma'am, if you die tonight, would you go to heaven? Five thirty in the morning. She said, I can't go to the grocery store. I can't go to the post office. And they're driving me crazy. I can't even go out and get the paper. He just sat there the whole time and looked at her. He just didn't say nothing. She said, Well, don't you have nothing you can say? Just one thing. She said, what's that? If you died tonight. <laughs> ah! I'm going to tell you something, brother. You listen to me tonight. Hey, Victory Baptist Church, you got the best, biggest youth group around this part of the country. You ought to get out. Listen, you, you can absolutely. They may not come here, but they ought to know there's a church here that cares about They're going to get under conviction and they're going to know there's a church up here that cares about their soul. Amen. I'll tell you tonight, a working church is moving. We're moving. We're moving. Our church up there in Morgan and we get criticized. We get caught. That sort of hurt my feelings what y'all said on the internet. Uh, about, I didn't even know it. Don't tell me no more bad stuff. <laughs> Uh, and and I, I thought about that. You know, people say a bad thing, but you know, woe unto the man that everybody speaks well of. Right. I mean, if a preacher don't have people talking bad about him, he ain't doing much preaching. Especially these days. But anyway, I got to think about that. You know what our old church did last year? Uh, one year ago, this coming Saturday. We have a big day planned for this Saturday. We're going to try to bring a lot on the bus and everything. 
I think it was 1140 doors our church knocked on a year ago last Saturday. We met at 9.30 in the morning, and we didn't have near this many people, about as many as in this one section right here, about 30 people, and we got there at 9.30 in the morning, some of the ladies fixed breakfast, everybody got partners, they went out, they started texting me and calling me at 5 and 6 o'clock in the evening, they went out Saturday, stayed all day long, 1100 and something doors, you say, well, preacher of the Lord, let me tell you something, buddy, you can't talk to that many people and somebody not show up. We, we've got people still come almost every Sunday right now as a result of what happened. Listen, people ain't going to get saved if they ain't here. If they're here and they hear the word of God, God will save them. But it's our job to go get them and bring them in. Amen. Are you sick and tired of these preachers trying to blame the Holy Ghost for what they're supposed to be doing? Amen. The Lord didn't say pray and he'd bring them in. He said for us to go to the highways and heads and get them and compel them to come. Now the Holy Ghost got to convict them. And the Holy Ghost got to get them to Jesus. But it's our job to get them to church and to hear the gospel. Say amen. 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 One man said, well, when the Holy Ghost is ready, he'll send revival. Well, that's, a, that's a blasphemy. You think the Holy Ghost don't want revival? That's right. Sure he does. You know God wants it. One man said, well, when God gets ready, he'll save them. Are you really trying to tell me God don't want to save people today? It's not God's will that one person perish, but that all should come to repentance tonight. I get so tired of hearing people blame God for our laziness. They try to blame it on the Lord and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord have mercy. No Bob Gray down there in Florida had a big bus ministry. And he he said, he said they they uh I had kids running everywhere. And we have we have five buses at our church. We run them, and, and we got kids running everywhere. On Sunday morning, we have about hundred, somewhere one hundred fifty kids come on buses now, and oh, they're they're this sign. I mean, they come in there. Wow, Lord, mercy, and ask her. I, she she works with them back there. So, and I'm telling you, son, I'm I think they ever. Oh my goodness, there's never a dull moment, brother. I mean, they're coming out. We had one got. Uh, years ago, got on the phone, called 911, and, and they told some of us over in the neighbor's yard up in a tree. And some of them, I mean, they didn't like to do anything. And uh, Bob Gray, they was running around, they wouldn't sit down and behave. So Dr. Gray got all these deacons together, and he said, Now, you deacons, he said, uh, I'm going to put you in different areas of church. One's going to be back there near the restroom. Uh, one's going to be over here at the fellowship hall. One's going to be out in the front yard. Other's going to be in the back parking lot. He said, you sort of patrol out there. If you see any bus kids out there running around, he said, you grab them, bring them in here. They can't even go to the other junior church. You set them down on the front row and make them behave. So the deacons did that. They started patrolling the grounds to make sure there were no kids out there running around. You know, you got that many kids, ain't got parents out there. And one Sunday morning, Dr. Gray is up preaching, and he's up preaching that Sunday morning like that. Open the side door, and here comes one of his deacons. Got, he had two, got two little fellows out there in the yard. He had them by the neck like that right there. And he'd bring them in like that. And he said, you sit down right there and don't you move. And the little boys just sat down like that right there. And Brother Ken, he preached. Old Dr. Gray preached. He preached. He was about 11 or 12 years old. And uh, he said, now get out of here and get saved. Get the life of God. And sure enough, them two little boys still got saved. They got saved. Somebody took the Bible and led them to the Lord and they prayed the sinner's prayer and got saved. And I mean, you know, it's one in them big churches like that. Boy, they tie them up, get them up, you know, get them back. They baptize them right then and there. We don't, we don't need to do that, but they do that. And I ain't, I ain't calling them for that. They did it in the Bible the same hour that they believed. And you know what they did? Them little boys got saved. They had them robes on them up there in the choir uh, and in the baptistry and they baptized them, got their name and information, signed them up to the sword of the Lord. I mean, wrote their name, got, got them a King James Bible, uh, discipled them a little bit. Them little boys didn't even know what hit them. He said, now are you boys ready to go? They said, yes, sir. He said, now let me tell you what he's not doing. They said, can we go now, sir? He said, yes. What bus did you come on? They said, we didn't come on. <laughs> he said, what? What you doing? They said, Mama told us to go to the store and get some stuff, and we were just walking, watching that man come out there and brought us in. You know what you call that? You call that aggressive. So then, amen? So then. You say, preacher, that's it. They should do that. That's better than sitting around, never doing nothing. 
I'm pushing you. My job tonight is to push you. You're going to come home one night and your neighbor is going to have a wreath on the door. They're dead in hell. I'm going to take it tonight. Let's go witness to them. Amen. Let's go witness to them. You got all day tomorrow. You got all day Saturday. Let's go witness to them. Let's go witness to them. Take them one of them vans. Paul Youth Rally, Victory Baptist Church, Oregon Hill Road, Ruffin, North Carolina. We're going to have a rock concert in reverse Saturday night. Amen. Opposite spirit. Years ago, a preacher called me, sincere young preacher. He had started a little church and he was running about 40 or 50 people on Sunday morning. And it was in Florence, South Carolina. And he wanted me to run a preacher out. And I said, okay. And it's a long time ago. I was only about 20, 20 something years old. And he, he said, Danny, please. And the, now, I don't ever leave our church on Sunday morning, just rarely. Once a year, I'm gone on Sunday and at the most twice. And so. I told him, he kept begging. He said, can you come Sunday? He said, we're planning a big day. We want to get people saved. And he talked me into it. He finally talked me into it. I said, all right, I'll come. And it was on oh, this side of Florence, almost to Myrtle Beach, you know, Florence, South Carolina. And I, I got up early that morning, about 4 o'clock in the morning, drove all the way down. It took me about four hours to drive it. And I drove and drove and drove and drove. And you know what them people did? Their church, the whole church, what <laughs> Wasn't no bigger, maybe as big as this platform here. It would seat uh, as many as your choir, maybe out here about 100 people, packed down full. They run about 50 every Sunday. And the pastor challenged them people, and they got it. So I think some of you are starting to get it, but a lot of you are not. Everybody in here, get this. Get it. <laughs> Teenagers, get it. And they got it. And them people went out and got to work that week. And they called it Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. He told me, he said, we're going to have Sunday, Sunday. I said, what's that? And he said, well, you go, you know, you always talk to people that say, come to church. They say, well, I'm going to come Sunday. He said, oh, that's this Sunday. You get to come Sunday. And you know what? It caught on, brother. That little thing, God got in it. Amen. The Lord got in that little thought. And they was out all over that community getting their friends to come. I walked in there that morning. They had 150 people in that little room. Tripled their attendance in one Sunday, one week. I walked in there, I couldn't believe it. There was old redneck guy all around that wall. I said, glory to God. I said, that's why the Lord wants me to come down here. That's why I'm here now. And I preached that morning. We had a great revival. Well, it come to pass that I was staying out the street in a double wide mobile home with an elderly man in the church named Troy Brodkin. And he's wife Lucille. And Troy uh, was old. Lord, I don't know how old he was. He's pushing 80, I reckon. And he was out there, and him and his wife lived in a double wide mobile home, and they had an extra bedroom. And they said, Preacher, would you mind staying there? I said, I don't care. I put stuff in there. So I went in the back room, put my stuff in there, and had got that night's sleep. That, uh, that first, first night, we come back. But let me tell you what happened at church. Sunday night came. The preacher got up and he said, Folks, this morning was a great success. Had over 150. I've got people about coming up saved, how many rededicated their life. And he said, I'm going to give some awards for those that brought the most visitors. And it was good stuff like King James Bible, Bible on tape, cassette, just stuff like that, legitimate stuff. And, uh, he said, Sister so-and-so, would you come up here? There's a girl about 16 years old. She come up, teenage girl, stood right there, and he said, this young lady brought nine people to church this morning. And I was sitting over there, praise the Lord, hey, man, man, that girl brought nine people. They, these girls in here tonight can do that. I know you can. I know you can. You've got the gift of gab. <laughs> Run that mouth for the Lord. You can run that mouth and do them thumbs at the same time. I've seen you do it. You, I've seen them text and talking over here. 
If you put all that for the Lord, that you'd be dangerous. Well, anyway, he gave her a Bible, gave her cassette tapes, and he said, Sister so-and-so, would you come up here? And there's a, a lady, an elderly lady come up. He said, this lady, I think she brought 16 people to church. Elderly lady. She had her row full and part of another row full of people on that Sunday morning. I thought, my soul, Lord have mercy. And then he said, the person who brought the most visitors today is Brother Troy. The old man I stand with. He said, Brother Troy, would you come forward? Troy come up there like this. He couldn't even. He, he had him as he, he, he walked like this. I thought, I thought, Lord have mercy. I'd give him a prize just for getting his sense there. He says, he, I said, oh my goodness. Troy got up there and he stood all humped over like this. And the pastor got up and he said, Brother Troy brought 40 visitors to the church. So I slumped down in my, I felt like a hypocrite. I did. I slumped down and I said, let Troy preach. <laughs> really? I deserve to get up there and preach. That man brought 40 people to church. How long has it been since? I, I ain't never brought 40 people to church by myself, not in one service. I thought, my oh, Lord. So I got interested in, in what made him tick. So we went home, sat down that night, and I remember I was sitting on the couch, and there's a coffee table there, and Lucille's in the kitchen, and Troy's sitting there. I said, Troy, how did you get all them people to come to church? And he started telling me. You know what he did? He said, and he's, he's an old retired truck driver and he's a drunk. And he got saved. And he'd been saved just a couple of years. And everybody around there knew the old Peterbilt truck, freight liner, goes down Interstate 95, right down through there. You know, it goes all the way to Florida. And that to Jacksonville. And then it goes north up into North Carolina. And they live right there on the interstate. And uh, right there where old, that old crazy Mexican places are, you know, south of the border, you know, all, all them sign. And he, and old Troy sat there and he was smoking like that. And he said, Brother Danny, he said, I got this old emphysema. He said, Lord save me. He said, I quit that. I quit that. Go drinking. You know what he done? He got on the phone Monday morning. He called somebody up and said, John, John, it's Troy. You met me, don't you, John? It's John. You come to church with me Sunday? It, it, you, know, yeah, you, you know where it's at. Yeah, will you come? You promise? Bring your friend. Bring your, will you come to Troy one time? Thank you. Hung up. Now, Bill, Bill, this is Troy. You remember? We work together. Bill, you come to church Sunday? Yeah. Come, you remember the time I fixed your car for you? You come to church for them? Hang up. He calls up my buddy. Hey, buddy, you come to church? All day Monday. All day Tuesday. All day Wednesday. He aggravated the fire out of people. Relatives, people he worked with, boss men, Trump, Trump, stayed on that phone. He couldn't even walk. He couldn't go around the community. And on Saturday morning, he went and recapped all them. Hey, John, you're going to be there now, ain't you? You're going to be there. It's Troy. Now, all that. And brother, 40 of them showed up. Amen. You know what he done? He went to work. Amen. He went to work. It's like fishing. Y'all like to go fishing? Some of y'all like to go fishing? Listen, if you fish enough, you're going to catch a fish. You can be the sorriest fisher one in the world, but if you keep throwing it out there, something's going to get on there. It might be a gasm and goozle. <laughs> Buddy, when you get the bus fish, you get some gasm and goozles. Them's ugly, like bullfrog-looking fishes. Well, Troy sat there and he got on it. He said, he said, Brother Danny, I quit that old drinking. All I do now is smoke these old cigarettes. And I'm trying to quit. I said, I think, man, I'm Smoke like freight train, Carl. I care if you bring, bring, bring 40 people to church. If I You don't like that, do you? The self righteous people don't like that, do you? I don't agree with smoking. Nobody ought to smoke. Smoking is bad for you. Kill you. Bad, costs a lot of money and everything. It's not good. But I tell you one thing, I got more respect for a man who smokes a cigarette and get out and do something for God than I have you people who don't ever do nothing wrong, but don't ever do nothing right. Yeah, preach. Say amen right there. Amen. Lord, I know these people, they don't do this. They don't do that. They don't do this. Bless, they're so proud of all the stuff they don't do. That don't make you nothing. Amen. I can take you to the funeral home and read for the night and show you some people that don't smoke and don't, <laughs> and don't watch dirty movies. That don't make
don't make them Christian. You ain't a Christian for what you don't do. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's right. just high yeah. Old Troy got to work. Now we're going to, by God's grace. Right. We're going to go to work. Lord put this on my heart. Lord mercy, I'll say one more thing. And I'm through. I don't usually preach this long. Y'all must need it bad. <laughs> Not my fault. A working church is a growing church. You can't have it. If a church will get out and work, win, listen, a soul winning working church will get more people saved by accident than these deeper life Bible study churches will. Studying their deeper lives and deeper truths and deeper this and deeper. There ain't nothing wrong with Bible study. I'm all for it. We do it every Wednesday night. I study the Bible every day of my life. But what good is it going to do for you to know what the toe on the beast and the toenail on the hangnail of the beast or the third beast, man, if you don't ever get out and tell nobody about it? Say amen. I'm all for Bible study. Let's get out and do something about what we know. Most of you teenagers went to camp. You know more about the Bible than a lot of preachers do on the mission field. Amen. Let's get out and do something about it. Amen. I want to challenge you tonight. You make up your mind. Some of you stopped up. Now, what I mean by that is, years ago, I had a in this this trailer and. And uh, I got to, <laughs> I got to every time I I noticed when I washed the dishes in the sink that the it would it would like the water wouldn't go down it would stay about this deep for a little while and I started noticing oh it ain't nothing and then it started getting longer and longer and finally it just gets worse just stay there for a while and I'd come back about an hour later and it would be down and there'd just be this line half around the sink of old nasty. <coughs> That's why I never did like to wash dishes. I'd rather, I'd rather about change a diaper than I have to wash dishes. Stick your hands in that nasty, filthy dishwater. They couldn't be cleaned. It's like taking a bath. Just watering in your own filth. <laughs> and and uh, I remember it got to where it was sticking up like that, and it got to where it wouldn't go down. And somebody said, I bet the mom said, Danny, you need to go get you some grain up. I said, okay, I heard it right now. Right. So I went to the store, and I, I found, I, I looked up to them and they said, okay, that's what I need right there. There's some guy there to stop drain up. So I went home, and I read the direction. And it said, put two tablespoons of drain oil in drain. Wait 30 minutes, flush with clean, cold water. I said, okay. I went, and I heard it. Went down there and I started going, making a noise. Like, like it was sizzling or something down in there. I thought, my Lord, what's in there, a rat? <laughs> so, I remember thinking, I thought, what in the world has got down in there, chicken bones or something? And I went to sit down for a while, and I came back, and I turned the water on real fast, and it just went, Ooh, come up again. It oh, didn't work. So I read on there and said, if it don't work, repeat once. I said, okay. Two more big spoonful, dig it. In that sink, and I heard it just go, shh. I said, I'll get it this time. I went and sat down for a while. I come back in there. It was all the water was down. Turned on the hot, I mean the cold water. And it just started piling up again. Okay. And I grabbed that thing of grain oat, and I just went like that and just started pouring. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, got, I heard something going on. I got down and looked under the sink, and there was smoke coming out of it. <laughs> It was smoking, I ain't kidding you. And I thought, like, oh Lord, burning a hole through that thing. And it, and it, it starts smoking, I hear it going, shh, like fry. And the smoke was coming off the pipe. And I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? And I thought, I'll get it this time, brother. And I left it 45 minutes in that sink. So whatever's in there is going out. Sure enough, sure enough, that time, I come in there, I turned that cold water on, and it went down there and I watched it. It started coming up a little bit and it went boom, boom. It did sort of boom, 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 boom. And I was looking at it like that and it went down. Got it. And that water just running through there. That, it was going out fast as it was coming in. It wasn't even piling up. I said, got it. 
And I thought about that, and then I preached on it. That Suddenly I thought, you know what? That's the way a lot of us are. We're supposed to be pipes, like the Holy Spirit comes through us and out to people, right? Amen. But we're clogged up, man. Mm. We are clogged. We got so much junk in us, the Lord can't flow. You know what? Have you ever felt like the Lord just flowed through you? Isn't that a, isn't that a blessing? You know why He came tonight? You got rock music and TV shows and old jealousy and sin and unbelief and in our, and the Lord just goes, psh, there's smoke coming out of some of y'all's head right now while I'm preaching. You know what I'm doing tonight? I'm just putting a grain in you. Some of y'all just sitting there sizzling right now. Boy, I'd like to see you come up here all over tonight and get down here and it just go, and just break loose till the Lord flow through. Wouldn't that be a blessing that you just feel him going, you're clogged up, buddy. <laughs> you need a dose of spiritual drain get them chicken bones out of your soul. <laughs> or rats or whatever is in there. Niceness. <laughs> Niceness is a Greek word that means all kind of <laughs> different stuff. That comes from the mountains. Don't y'all know what niceness means? There's a couple of stuff You know the old saying? Honey, get that dish rag and wipe that young's nose. We ain't like I can't stand it's niceness. Yeah, the dish rag. But I want to tell you something tonight. Spiritually tonight, we get all clogged up. Y'all look all nice here tonight and got your hair fixed and you took a shower and all that. But I'm telling you, inside, some of y'all in bad shape. Bad shape. And you need just let the Lord just pour that stuff in you and just burn it out. Let's do that and get to work. I want to challenge you to fill your row up. Pick a row in here and fill it up and set it up. Get, get you some traffic out of here tonight. Call somebody. Hey, listen, you young people, every one of y'all can do this. If you ain't been saved long, you're the best one in here because you still got a lot of friends that don't go to church. You know, try. After you've been saved long time, they don't, you know, they don't ever have nothing to do with you. But you still got some that ain't dropped you yet. You get them. Get them in here to God. Let's have a work in the church. It's healthy. It's moving. It's growing.